Sesame Connect is a telecom operator simulation game that helps participants understand the relationships between the different telecom operator functions and develops their telecom-related business acumen. The simulation improves the participants' decision-making skills while familiarizing them with the whole decision-making environment for a telecommunications operator, including mobile, fixed broadband, entertainment, IT services, channel management, network infrastructure development, and finance. Each team will undertake the role as the new management of a telecom operator that provides telecom and entertainment services for residential customers and telecom and IT services for corporate customers. The company is currently placed in a situation where the expansion of a 4G network is the key decision. In addition, teams need to carry forward the company's recent entry to the entertainment services. Pricing, promotion, channel management, entertainment service strategy, human resources, network infrastructure development, and finance are among the decision areas that the participants must consider. In addition, the teams will make decisions about various different events that influence the success of their companies for the whole duration of the simulation. Each simulation market consists of 2 to 12 competing teams, with up to 8 members in each. The number of parallel simulation markets is not limited, making it possible to utilize the simulation for any number of participants in the class. The simulation is played over 2 to 12 rounds, with each round constituting one fiscal year. Practice rounds that do not influence the actual game may be played before the actual rounds. In Sesim Connect, all teams begin from the exact same competitive position and face the exact same market forces. Teams compete only against the other teams in their own market, not against the computer. So each team's decisions influence their competitors' results and the market development overall. The simulation offers customization options for different use cases and optimal implementation. The simulation can be deployed in a simple configuration to allow for concentration on the core issues, and it can be also used in a more comprehensive setting with additional decisions. In addition, the storyline and simulation parameters can be modified to meet the learning requirements. The essence of the simulation is to closely resemble a modern telecom operator environment, tie together multiple business concepts and disciplines, and allow for the successful execution of alternative strategies. The simulation is designed to reward those who can best identify underlying trends, success factors, changes in competitive situation, and successfully formulate and adjust a winning strategy. The key learning goals of the simulation game are to increase participants' awareness of the current telecom operator environment, to develop capabilities in identifying and analyzing core issues and trends in the telecom industry, to illustrate core issues and decision-making in the telecom sector in a far more engaging way, to provide practical experience in teamwork and problem-solving, and to excite competitive spirits in a dynamically evolving marketplace. The Sesim Connect simulation user interface is structured as follows. The home page has general information about the course and the team, plus upcoming deadlines. All decisions are made under the decision section. White cells in this section represent the actual decision cells, while blue cells are estimations that will only affect the team's pro forma statement. Results become visible in this area immediately after each deadline and are available to download as an Excel file. Previous rounds' results remain visible throughout the course of the game. The simulation schedule is available on this page. The schedule page presents the deadlines for registration and also the actual rounds. These deadlines are set by the instructor and can be modified during the simulation if needed. Teams and team members in your market can be viewed here. Teams can change their company name, create a slogan, enter a description, and embed a video if they wish. There are two separate discussion forums built into the simulation. One for the whole course and one for each individual team. Any posts in a team forum are visible only to members of that team. Readings contain decision-making instructions and a case description. The instructor can also make course materials available through this section. The decision-making instructions cover all the available decisions in the simulation and some of the key issues to be considered, while the case description gives some additional information on the current competitive situation and potential market trends. This is a good starting point for the simulation. After reading the decision-making guide and case description, the participants should read the market outlook in order to take into account general economic and industry trends. 
having familiarized oneself with the relevant course materials, competitive position, and the likely development of key trends, it is time to proceed with the actual decision-making. The first decision-making area is on their mobile, where participants start by setting prices for their various mobile services, including SMS, prepaid, and mobile broadband. Other important decisions here include the device markup percentage, marketing budget, and the churn rate estimate. On the right-hand side, participants will estimate the number of new customers they might gain compared to last round. When done, they can review their pro forma statement below based on the projections made so far. Fixed broadband is an optional module that can be enabled or disabled if needed. Decisions for fixed broadband include setup fees and monthly prices, marketing budget, and pricing for value-added services. Operators give different prices for high-speed connection and low-speed connection. In addition, Operators give different prices for customers who access the service through the operator's own network and for those who access through another operator's network. High-speed connection can only be offered to customers who access through the operator's own network. In addition, teams make estimations about the churn rates and the number of new customers. The teams also estimate the percentage of customers accessing through other operators' networks. Operators can offer entertainment services to their residential customers. Fixed broadband service is included in the entertainment package and decisions for the basic service include monthly price, number of additional TV channels to be offered, and margin percentage for the additional channels. Teams decide about the number of titles that they have in their video on demand library, commission percentage to motivate the shops for selling the entertainment packages, and price per click for advertisers on the operator's entertainment portal. Entertainment service is also an optional module that can be enabled or disabled if needed. In Sesim Connect, participants use five sales channels to make their services available to the customers. Their company's own shops, resellers, outbound and outsourced sales teams, a contact center, and online sales. Decisions in this area consist of the number of shops the company operates, the commission paid to and marketing support for resellers, the commission paid to the sales team for new or win-back customers, number of personnel in the contact center, as well as estimation for share of sale for all of the above. Here, participants can review an itemized list of their channel costs for this and last round. The service offering to corporate clients in Sesim Connect consists of two dimensions, re-engineering and customer-specific tailoring. Both of these have three levels of solution-specific approaches that participants can take depending on their strategies. Corporate solutions require consultants to implement them, and the more tailor-made the solution is, the more human resources it'll require. Therefore, participants will have to keep an eye on the number of consultants they have available for the round. New personnel can be attracted by raising salaries and investing in development. But remember that such an action will take one round to complete. Another important decision to be made here is the pricing of the service offering, which is represented in the form of return on initial investment percentage. Teams will also have to set the number of corporate client support personnel, which will have a direct effect on the amount of time customers will have to wait for support. Clients are rather sensitive to changes here, so a sudden jump in waiting time will definitely have a negative impact on the customer churn rate. Support personnel can be hired in the same round without delay. Finally, participants will have to select their preferred system maintenance and development method, which ideally should be aligned with their solutions offering. In this example, there are five network areas, but it can be more or less depending on your custom scenario. The strategic decision participants will have to make here is how much to invest in the expansion of their 4G network, their consumer network, and their corporate network in each area. Note that the network capacity is assumed to be able to support the coverage in all cases. Under events, participants will encounter one-time decisions related to their company that can have a variety of effects on the team results. Each event appears only once per simulation game. To manage the liquidity and capital structure of their companies, participants can do so on the finance page. Decisions here include dividend payment, share buyback, share offering, increase or decrease of long-term debt, and share price estimate. At minimum, the teams should make sure that they don't finance their investments with short-term loans that are more expensive than long-term loans. So teams must keep an eye on their balance before ending the round. Throughout the decision-making interface, participants have access to an anchor menu providing continuously updated figures based on the decisions and estimates made so far. The anchor menu consists of a balance sheet, cash flow statement, 
income statement, cost report, and ratios. The reports include previous round results and budgeted figures for the current round. Although not a true indicator of coming results, this provides teams with a base set of results they can analyze to evaluate the decisions they have made so far. The SESIM Connect simulation provides each team member with their own decision-making area that is accessed by their unique login details. Thus, each member is able to work independently and come up with decisions and a potential strategy for the team if they wish. Team members are then able to cooperate and collaborate here using the decision checklist page where all team members' decisions can be seen side by side. This allows SESIM Connect to be delivered just as effectively in a virtual or blended learning environment as it is in a traditional classroom setting. By pressing copy, a team member's decisions is moved to the team decision column. At the deadline, the system reads the decisions from the team decision column and calculates the results for the round. Team decisions can be edited directly by pressing go in the team column. In addition, any team member can access the other team member's decision area by pressing go in the respective column and import another team member's decisions to their own area by pressing import. After each round, the system generates a collection of reports for teams to analyze their performance. The reports become available immediately after the deadline passes, unless otherwise chosen by the instructor. The results section presentation approximately follows the decisions interface. It includes all the relevant product and operational level data, as well as financial reports, financial ratios, and industry aggregate level data that are required for in-depth analysis of market development. The various reports give vital information for teams looking to adjust their strategy and improve their performance. Every team should analyze the results by comparing their team's results against their competitors and try to identify winning and losing strategies and decisions, and then revise their strategy if necessary. The teams can be benchmarked in a variety of metrics, and while we endorse using cumulative total shareholder return, choosing the winning criterion is left to the instructor's discretion. Results can also be downloaded to a spreadsheet for further analysis by clicking Download, and the printer-friendly version can be accessed using the printable button. A slideshow of results can be accessed here and includes an array of charts and graphs detailing various aspects of the team's performance.